Okay, second round in Karlsruhe. Uh, one exciting round again. Uh, three decisive games and one very exciting draw, I think. Uh, Peter said it's one of the best, most exciting draws of the last couple of years, perhaps. Uh, what do you think? Uh, no, I mean, for sure. I agree. Uh, it had everything. Uh, it was up and down. At one moment, it looked as though Magnus was in trouble. And then it looked like he was winning. And then Levon found some amazing resources. And it ended in a draw. And those are the draws uh, we love in chess. So um, just a great fight. And credit to both of the players. Yeah. And you're um, analyzing this without an engine at the commentary room. Why are you doing that? Why are you not using an engine? Yeah, because we want to enjoy and we have enjoyed uh, every moment of it. I mean, it was so fantastic because like this, we really have the real feel how the players are also feeling. They're also sitting in the dark, they are calculating, they are coming up with fascinating ideas, but they don't know the evaluation. Is it winning? Is it better? Is it worse? What's going on? And uh, I think like this, we got this thrill. And uh, basically, that's the main idea why we are not turning on the engine. Because once you see the evaluation, everything looks so easy, so smooth, even in the most crazy position. But when you are analyzing and you feel that you still don't know what's going on, despite uh, discovering so many ideas, then you really appreciate what, what is going on over the board. Yeah, that was a very exciting game. And three more decisive games as well. Uh, Hu Yifan misses 100% right yeah. now. She's playing really well, don't she, doesn't she? Yeah, she. I mean, she she made yesterday's win against Fabiano look very easy, which is very uncharacteristic for Fabiano. Normally, he puts up a big fight, but yesterday he just couldn't fight. The position was so bad, and today it was a strange game because it felt as though Gyorgmai was really pressing for a lot of the middle game and felt like he had a really promising position, and then at some moment he made some really inaccurate moves and she took the initiative really quickly and punished him immediately and won the game and she's on two out of two and she plays Magnus tomorrow with White so that's going to be a really great fight and um, it'll be interesting to see we were discussing at the end here how is Magnus going to approach the game because Magnus is only on 50% we know he's not happy with 50% he has black against Ho Yufan. He's still expected to win that game, but does he really risk it? Does he go all in with something very, very, um, you know, uh, well, risky? Because Ho Yufan, she's a solid player with white. And if he just plays his normal 1e4, e5 openings, there are many things she can do. I mean, look what she did against Fabiano in this, in this Berlin. So is he going to risk it? We'll see. He, I, I think he's going to, I think he's going to give it a go. Okay, we were just talking about Fabiano, you uh, just mentioned him. You won today. What about that game? Well, it was a very interesting uh, positional battle. Somehow I had the feeling that uh, Arkady didn't really know what he's playing for, because usually I think it's the first time he played the Vienna. Uh, I'm not sure that he was really familiar with this, and uh, he's playing with the white pieces. He's usually a very aggressive player. He wants to keep the game going, but somehow he didn't really got anything out of the opening. And then with this queen before, I think when he went queen before, he was still hoping for something, but b6 was like a cold shower. And after that, uh, Fabiano took over. He had the initiative. Uh, maybe the game was more or less balanced, but uh, it was much more unpleasant to play with the white pieces. And finally, in time trouble, uh, Arkady missed something and then the game uh, just collapsed immediately. So a good win by Fabiano. Good win by Fabiano and a good win by MVL today. Long, long, long game. Yeah, the longest game, the final game to finish. And we just spoke to MVL and to Mateus. Credit to Mateus because he fought really hard and he was... Uh, on the back foot from just after the sort of middle game, end game transposition, um, where he was a pawn down. We felt like Mateusz should have gone in for a an exchange of knights. He had an opportunity to do that and then play rook and bishop versus rook and bishop of opposite colors with a pawn down, but with very good drawing chances. But when you keep the knights on there as well, MVL just slowly but surely ramped the pressure. He still had certain... Uh, problems he had to solve during the game, but in the end uh, he found the way and uh, well Mateus he should he shouldn't be too disheartened he really fought hard and uh, as Peter said in the commentary we'll, we'll learn a lot from these games so um, great experience for him. Great stuff after two rounds. Uh, do you think the players are a bit like inspired by so many people watching here? 
I think definitely. I mean, this uh, playing hall, I, I think it's maybe the first time in the chess history that we have something like this, that the best players in the world playing uh, with so many players in the same hall. The whole atmosphere inspires the players. Uh, there is a lot of tension, a lot of expectation from the public. Once you see that there is so much interest as a player, you feel yourself not just a sportsman, but an artist also. And we see so many artistic moments also in these games. I mean, uh, Magnus Carlsen versus Levon Aronian was a pure art. It's just fantastic. Okay, then we're looking forward to the third round. And uh, thank you very much. You do deserve your, your day. <laughs> <laughs> You're the night off done, I think. Have a rest now. Thank you very much. <laughs> Cheers. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Yes.